Austin Marshall is about to join us as he does every Monday. We're talking super rugby. Marshy, welcome back. Yes, good afternoon to you, Kev. Hope everybody is well and had a good weekend. Yeah, I hope I hope the same for you, and I hope that you didn't turn any rugby off on the weekend because it gets you in trouble when you talk about shite like that. <laughs> no, mate, I um, actually had a really good weekend. Um, thoroughly enjoyed afternoon kickoff in Christchurch. It'd be fair to say it was um, absolutely brilliant afternoon, like twenty degrees yeah. and uh, a full house as well. I thought it was. Um, a real advocate that we should continue to try and get afternoon games because it's sometimes um, a, a better environment for kids, etc. They don't get cold, and um, yeah, it was just a real good atmosphere at the weekend. Let's start there because when Kieran Reid said that in the pre-match, he's standing there with Andy Ellis, and when he turned around, he said, "Look, it feels like a Sydney afternoon here for the Waratahs, twenty balmy degrees." I was thinking, "What?" But if that match was kicking off at 7 o'clock three hours later, the temperature would have dropped by a good probably 15 or 16 degrees. So, yeah, you're right. Um, again, the Crusaders imperious, but some injury worries, which are a real concern going into this round and then the playoffs. Yeah, there is. Their growing injury ward is continually to pl- continuing to plague them, as it has all season. Um, you know, the fact that they had to go to John Afoa, 39 years young, and... Um, get him back from France to fill the, the problems that they've got in the front row. Uh, Cullen Grace going off with um, what looked to be a reasonably serious injury. Certainly looks like David Harvey's super rugby campaign is over. He looked like he tore his hamstring um, quite badly. So, yes, they are starting to, to really feel the pinch the Crusaders. They're lucky they've got so much depth. No, still them and the, and the Chiefs, isn't it? I mean, when when um, we've lost Harvelli for the World Cup, there goes another one. Also, Lester Fianoukis are off to France. Is that going to be offset and tempered by the news that Will Jordan has signed on? Yeah, I think so, um, absolutely. I, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that uh, Will Jordan is a player that the uh, New Zealand rugby absolutely had to retain uh, when you think that uh, the calibre of player that's going to be leaving, particularly out of that back line, with the likes of um, Bowden Barrett in particular and Richie Moonga, you know, key playmakers and decision makers um, who will be missing from, from the All Black jersey. Uh, you know, you need somebody like Will Jordan who is a good decision maker, who is now not just the one to one sort of test, one, uh, one year All Black, I should say. He's starting to establish himself. Um, look, he can never replace talent that leaves and and that's just a cycle that the All Blacks and most teams in the world go through post a Rugby World Cup Uh, but getting good signatures for a Rugby World Cup is key and and New Zealand Rugby Union have done a pretty good job this year in retaining quite a few of those players that we need to stay on these shores. Justin Marshall is with us, 81 Tess, veteran of the All Blacks on the sideline for Sky Sport of course, kicking off all on Friday night Highlanders versus Reds and Look, I mean, I'm so glad that we've got so much rugby to actually talk about because it has been quite a journey to get to week 14 before all of a sudden the narrative does become about all these teams. And I suppose it's because we're approaching the playoffs. But that was a cracking game, Highlanders-Reds. Compared to the standard that we saw from the Highlanders the previous week, I think that was against the Rebels. A great fitting uh, end to Aaron Smith's career as a Highlander. And it also puts them in with... Well, an outside chance away at the Blues of still making the, uh, the eight. They're in eighth position at the moment. Can they do that? Yeah, absolutely, and I totally agree. You know, it was a really good game of rugby. Uh, the Reds are no pushover, um, as the Chiefs found out, uh, and you know they they played really well. But the Highlanders lifted, and there was no way they weren't going to lift. When you're talking about a legend of Highlanders rugby, Aaron Smith, I don't think his uh, his record of games will ever be surpassed. Um, his resilience, his determination, his competitiveness, and the standard he played at for all of those. Um, I think it was 180 plus games, just uh, unbelievable. And you know that 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 was a fitting tribute to him that the team could get up on a on, on a really um, you know difficult day in terms of the opposition because they they well, geez, that try they scored from their own goal line was just incredible. So it goes to show what the players wanted to put in. Um, the public turned out, which was brilliant, and Aaron Smith got the uh, send off he deserved. And yeah, the force dropped the ball as well. Excuse the pun. So they. Um, after doing so well um, the, the week before against the Brumbies, they fell away, which enabled the Highlanders to sneak into the eight. All right, OK. So, I mean, I'm looking at 24, 23, 22, 21, 21. That is the Reds all the way down to the Rebels, people. I mean, all of these teams, well, are they are they cannon fodder when it comes to the finals? Well, they're not going to worry about that. It's just making the finals going to be good enough for those sides, for any of those sides that do it. 
I think the seasons they've had, um, just just making the finals is probably key for them. Uh, look, I, I, I know that you know when you're in that type of season, if you can just get yourself to a playoff, you've got to sort of bend the thought process like other teams are now jockeying for, which is trying to get a home game. You've just got to get yourself inside the eight. And there's no doubt that the way that the, the season has gone for a lot of those sides that you mentioned who could possibly take that eighth place, um, you know, halfway through the season, if you'd said that to them, they'd book it, book it in straight away just because they haven't had any rhythm at all. Um, but that, that's the danger of, of an eight, isn't it, rather than a four or a six, that eight teams that can go in, in there. And if they have a day out, any one of those teams that are placed sort of eight through to, to six against one of the top teams, they could completely roll reverse what's happened all season. So, do you know what I mean? Like, for an example, if the, if the Chiefs finish top and the Highlanders go to Hamilton and play them and beat them, it just doesn't really put the season um, in context, does it? But that's rugby and that's sport and that can happen. Justin, so when you're sitting there looking at this, to March Withers, when you're sitting there looking at these matches to come, I mean, the Chiefs beating the Brumbies, let's talk about that before we look at actually the fixtures to come, because, I mean, I'm sitting there looking at the Chiefs away the force and also uh, the Crusaders away the Hurricanes and whether they do actually look ahead a week rather than actually concentrate on this week. But that Chiefs versus Brumbies game, 31-21 to the Chiefs in Canberra. It wasn't a very good crowd, but it was a hell of a good performance from the Chiefs. What do you take from that game? Yeah, I don't know what to take from it, Marty. The, the Chiefs just continue to be impressive. You know, when anything gets thrown in front of them, they, they take it on full throttle. And I thought they went over there really professionally. They put a, they put a very strong side out. Uh, and, you know, they played really well. Um, Ioane got an opportunity to start at 10. I thought he was, he was really good. So, again, it's kind of showing the rest of the country um, that they have got some muscles to flex when they need to, you know, that you could uh, you not have McKenzie or Gatlin, but then you get Josh Juani step in there. So but they've got some real depth. Um, I'm just not sure about the Brumbies. That's that's what I took out of that game. I, you know, there's quite a lot of Wallabies in that side and potential Wallabies that Eddie Jones will be looking at. And that was a must win for them. And... Uh, I just thought that they let themselves down. They they weren't um, as physical and dominant as I thought that they could be, given the calibre of player they've got. Uh, yeah, it's a really strange one. They are, they are quite conclusively, and it shows on the table, the strongest, the strongest of all of the Australian sides. But it's a, it'll be a worry for Eddie Jones uh, and, and indeed for Wallaby supporters that their top team is still struggling, particularly in the latter half of the season, to compete with the top New Zealand sides. They are simply getting blown away. So, yeah, not good from them. OK, so if you're the Chiefs away the force this weekend, you've got that buffer. Do you rest some players? Do you not take them on that big trip? I, 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 I can see the logic behind that now. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Um, look, I, I'm not entirely sure. I, I, I'm more thinking momentum. Um, momentum you need to take into finals footy and, and you need to take it with players playing confidently, knowing each other. Uh, you know, the, the, there's another conundrum, I guess, at the weekend where the Hurricanes play the Crusaders. Now, look, they're not really going to improve their place, the Hurricanes, so technically they could probably, if they wanted to, depower their team a bit um, because the Crusaders have everything to play for, um, you know, because you never know where they may finish up depending on other results. But the Hurricanes will probably stay put on the table. So, um, you know, but what does Jason Holland do? Does he go for the old freshen up? Um, or does he simply go right out? We've just got to take momentum into to the, the finals. Um, the following week, knockout rugby. I'm going full full guns blazing at the Crusaders to, top them, uh, to knock them over. OK, um, Blues and the Hurricanes, well, another great game that was, wasn't it? And it just, you know, the Hurricanes this year just haven't been able to close these games. The only New Zealand side they've beaten is the Highlanders, and that is why, when it comes to the points table, they are where they are in this position of, you know, finally hosting uh, the Crusaders and thinking they're going to have to do what they haven't been able to do all year to get a home semi final. And that's hoping that the Brumbies or the Blues falter in front of them. Yeah, well, that's right. And, uh, you know, do you, see, do you see the Brumbies again... Um, falling over against the Rebels, probably unlikely. Um, and the Blues, with how impressive they were, were, I thought they were the most impressive team of the weekend against the Hurricanes, to be honest. So, yeah, you would think that the Hurricanes are sort of stuck where they really are right now. Um, 
you know, again, anything can happen, but the likelihood is that they will stay in the position they are now, um, and it's just about how they approach that game. But I think if you look at their perspective and their thought process, and it's not just the management, it's the players as well. The players need to feel that should they have to meet the Crusaders at some stage in finals football, that they can beat them. So why not do that in the round robin? Right. That would be my mindset while I was thinking about that game. Just playing finals football from this weekend. Absolutely. You've got to. And and you've got to take the, the, the mindset that this is, in reality, exactly what we're going to face the following weekend. And we can either be on the train still or we'll be off at the station and having Mad Monday. <laughs> right. Everybody likes a Mad Monday, but you want to have it after the final. Justin, were you double screening on Saturday night? I mean, how did you watch the Blues, Hurricanes and also the Warriors, Broncos? Uh, I didn't um, really watch either, to be honest, Marty. Okay. There you go, you've caught me out. Right. I, uh, I watched the highlights of both games. Um, you know, I was, I was at the uh, the Crusaders Hall of Fame function on Friday night, so I had to catch up with all my rugby on Saturday uh, through some through uh, through sort of late part of the morning. Okay, and so and just tell us about that function then. So, is it anyone that's played for the Crusaders is allowed to come, or is it just finals winning teams? No, every um, Crusader, any, every player that has worn the jersey, so that would be John Afoa now, um, is a Crusader. Brilliant. And uh, they, they uh, are more than welcome to uh, attend the function. There were 700 people there, Marty. It was wow. Also uh, giving money to the I Am Hope charity, which is Mike King's charity for mental health, which is incredibly well supported, and so it should be. Uh, but, yeah, th- th- there was, uh, you know... Absolutely outstanding to, to walk in the room and see uh, legends, um, players that have played one, two, three, or, uh, you know, 203, like White Crockett games for the Crusaders in that room. Every Crusader, former, current, and even the present players that were there, Sam White, like Richard Mongo, Jack Goody, all those guys were there. It was just an incredibly humbling experience to be in that room and an amazing, amazing night. Yeah, see, this is the greatest thing about rugby, and especially in New Zealand, and I hope these traditions never, ever die, mate. I mean, this is why you play the game, isn't it? Because it's the one sport in the world which I believe forges relationships up and above and beyond every other sport. Maybe league does it as well, I don't know, but I'm more I'm more kind of, you know, sort of, in, more, I have more knowledge about the way that rugby has done it. I've been around it a lot more. But just people who play in teams and that over the years when they're playing as kids, as school kids, going through all of that, just the bonds that you form, they're as solid as even years later, aren't they? Oh, they absolutely are. And, and you know what was incredibly uh, satisfying was I was able to sit and talk to a lot of the players from the 1996 First Crusade. You know, wow. the, foundation, the foundation players had all, the majority of them turned up. Um, and, and seeing some of like the guys like Graham Jack, um, Kevin Nepia was there. Um, you know, the, the, the players, Stu Lowe was there, Angus Gardner, guys that, you know, way, way back when, when we first started, were in that room as Crusaders. And uh, that goes to show you the camaraderie of rugby and, and what it means to be a Crusader. Um, because once a Crusader, always a Crusader. It was just absolutely humbling um, and made me really proud, really proud to be in that room. Well, fantastic weekend of footy, mate. We haven't said that that often. Let's finish on the Fiji and Drua versus Moana Pacifica. What a, oh, yeah. what a berserk <laughs> game that was, mate. It was like a T20 <laughs> game of rugby. Yeah, it was. Look, you know, two sides that obviously just uh, love throwing the ball around. Like I, just, like I said, defence wasn't um, the winner on the day offense was, but just <laughs> full of full of yes, entertainment and yeah. uh, and dramatic as well. You know, like poor old uh, Christian Lelafano uh, had the opportunity to, to snatch the game, but uh, and that's rugby sometimes. But I think uh, everybody was rewarded with a really quality contest. Yeah, I'm so glad that we've got to this stage of the season and finally we've got a hell of a lot to talk about. It's taken a bit of a, a while to get here, but here we are. Justin, look forward to chat next week. Thanks, mate.